Good morning and welcome to worship today at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Walkersville, Maryland. We are always, oh, I like that. We are always glad to have you with us. A couple of short announcements. Uh, next week is Reformation Sunday. It's all right, Florence. You're good. <laughs> and we will welcome uh, two new members, uh, Mike and Jackie Waz. So we're looking forward to that next week. Um, I meant to skip, but on the October 30th is Trunk or Treat. 5.30, Belinda? Anytime after 4 if you bring him your trunk. So we're looking for some junk in the trunk so that we can... <laughs> I'll be counseled later. Uh, All Saints Sunday is on November 7th, so if you have someone that you would like to remember in the bulletin and in our prayers on that day, please let the church office know so that we can get that together. On November 14th, we will be honoring our military, so if you are or have served in the military, please come or let the office know so that we can include your name in the bulletin. On the 19th, we'll be sponsoring a blood drive. What is this, four? Fourth, yeah. Fourth blood drive from 10 to 4 in the parish hall. And we're looking for some volunteers. So if you can find some time in your day on that Friday to help us out, it would be appreciated. Faith formation today for the, for the youth will be in the education wing. And for adults, we'll be across the street at the parish hall and we'll be finishing, finishing up human sexuality. Also, I was reminded that after service, if you care to do so, please grab a pumpkin on the way out. So let's quiet our hearts for worship.
Let us pray. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing and thankfulness for the abundance he has provided. As humanity coming together to support those who may not have the resources we have, we gather together to share in the goodness of our lives. We gather together with our gifts of food and resources so that we might call out to you from the rose side in an effort to provide for those who are struggling to make ends meet. We gather together with joy and thanksgiving for you have blessed us with an abundance, an abundance calling us to live out the words of nourishing and cultivating the mind, body, and spirit of our neighbors in our community. We gather together to hear your word, to know your word, and to live out a life in service to others. We ask that you bless all the gifts presented today from your bounty, that they may find their way to sustain and prosper at least one of your children in need. Dear Lord, we remain your humble servants and strive to live out our lives as you have taught. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we are, are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have, we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal compassion, have mercy on us. Turn us to seek your face, enable us to reflect your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. The first reading for the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost comes from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, verses 7 to 9. The introduction. This passage speaks not only of the southern kingdom, Judah, and its homecoming from exile in Babylon, but also of the northern kingdom, Israel or Ephraim, and its restoration. The northern tribes of Israel had been lost in exile to Assyria more than a century before Jeremiah prophesied. The first reading. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Here ends the first reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is psalm number 126, read responsively by the half verse. 
When the Lord restoreth the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. The second reading for today comes from the seventh chapter of Hebrews, verses 23 to 28. Human priests of old offered sacrifice for their own sins and served only until their death. In contrast, Jesus is God's son, the holy, sinless, resurrected high priest. Death did not terminate his priestly service, but through his death he has interceded for our sins. Here's the second reading. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints, as later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. Here ends the second reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God. Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then he sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his coat, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace be unto you in peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I've come to appreciate the concept of a noisy church. For if Bartimaeus had not been noisy and spoken up, where would he have been in the gospel for today? I suspect he would have just been one of those souls on the margins that no one pays attention to and leaves cast out to the curb. And one of the first times that I preached a sermon was in my hometown parish. And as you might expect, I was quite nervous being in front of the home crowd. Picture a small country parish with no air conditioning around July 4th. And even the best of us would be restless in that heat. Not to mention two small children keeping themselves busy under the pulpit. 
I have to admit it was a little distracting, but I made it through. I've never forgotten that day as I am now able to see what I was missing. Seeing God at work in our children has helped me to understand at times we need to be noisy. We cannot afford to shut anyone out of worship, much like Jesus was not willing to shut Bartimaeus out. What I find astonishing in today's gospel is the fact that Bartimaeus knew much more about Jesus and his path than the disciples did. But we have come to know that the disciples have been clueless throughout this gospel of Mark. Now contrast this story with that of the rich man who also clearly seemed to know who Jesus was, but failed to listen to the call that was issued. The rich man had everything to gain, was asking the right questions, but couldn't give up on what he had or where he stood in society. Or the story of James and John, who wanted a place of honor with Jesus. On the other hand, Bartimaeus kept calling out to Jesus, referring to him as the son of David, a definite sign that Bartimaeus knew Jesus' true identity. He was determined to be heard, even though the crowd did what they could to stifle him and put him to the side. And this is similar to where the disciples tried to keep the children away from Jesus. Both the blind man and the children were those on the margins who are definitely on Jesus' radar. And Jesus is certainly in tune with those who are at the margins, and Jesus will not let them be ignored. The blind man will not be deterred, as this may be his last chance to experience the beauty of Jesus and his healing power. And I think we can all appreciate that filled with the Holy Spirit, we are able to do anything. Remember the woman who had been sick with excessive bleeding? All she wanted to do was to be close to Jesus because she was filled with the Spirit and knew Jesus would be able to help. She had faith that all she needed to do was to touch Jesus in order to be healed. So Jesus hears the calls and had the crowd bring Bartimaeus to him. But Bartimaeus did not need any help. He leapt up from his place, shed off his coat, and ran to Jesus' voice. In effect, Bartimaeus was shedding off his infirmity, giving up all he knew and rushing to the person he knew was going to be his salvation. Bartimaeus was opening up and allowing the Messiah to be revealed. As Jesus has now begun his trek to Jerusalem, and his time has come. Jesus asked Bartimaeus what he wanted done for him, and contrasting James and John, the only thing Bartimaeus wanted was to be healed. And Jesus was quick to oblige him and told him as a result of his faith he was made well. Jesus then says, go away from here, as opposed to follow me. In contrasting the rich man, Jesus saw in the blind man one who was a true disciple and would certainly proclaim what had been done for him. But the blind man does not do as Jesus asked. He fell in with the group and began to follow Jesus on the journey to Jerusalem, the journey to the cross. However, I believe there is an underlying meaning to this story, a story which allows us to witness Jesus teaching others about call and following him to the cross. Jesus doesn't call out to Bartimaeus yet tells those in the crowd to bring the blind man to him. And this is the same crowd who told that blind man to be quiet. Don't draw attention to yourself. Just leave the teacher be. 
Perhaps they were embarrassed to be in the company of someone in such low status as this beggar who can't seem to be quiet. Perhaps they're trying to control access to Jesus like the disciples or probably trying to keep this unclean person from defiling the Jesus. And perhaps they try to quiet the beggar because they're putting their needs ahead of others. Or they reprimand him because dealing with the beggar would limit Jesus' capacity to be with them and not those on the fringes. This blind beggar knows more than they do. He knows the true identity of Jesus as being that son of David. And he calls out even more loudly until his voice is heard from beside the road. And in this teaching moment, Jesus tells the crowd to call Bartimaeus to him. Now those who had tried to limit access to Jesus are put in a position to assist in Jesus' ministry to the beggar and much, much more. Jesus tells them to stop obstructing, start enabling, and help your neighbor. It's almost, as immediate, it's almost as if they were immediately transformed and now encourage the man to come forward. Take heart. He is calling you. And Bartimaeus asks no special privileges from Jesus. Just show me mercy. Now before Jesus heals Bartimaeus, he welcomes this man into the center of attention to highlight his worth in the world and restore him to a right relationship in society. Jesus has not come to bestow power and honor, but to open the eyes to the new spiritual, social, and material realities made possible when God reigns. And right now you're going, well, what did he teach him? And it's something that we might have in common with the crowd and the disciples. And I would proffer that Jesus has just shined a light on the need for all people to step in and value those around them, no matter their circumstance. Jesus opens up for this crowd and for us the ability to accept the call to be a disciple for everyone, disregarding any social status or stigma they may have. We are all welcome to be in relationship with God. In this story of hope and compassion, we are invited to put ourselves in the place of all the characters so we can discern the role we are called to emulate. Bartimaeus with his needs and his prophetic insights, Jesus with his compassion and grace, the crowd with its determination to keep Bartimaeus both blind and invisible, and ultimately our opportunity to guide him to Jesus with the hopeful words, take courage, get up, he's calling you. Bartimaeus enters our story today sitting beside the road on the only possession he owns, his coat. It ends with him going along the way with Jesus and following him. And our story is more than just one of healing miracles we encounter in the Gospel of Mark. It's about discipleship and giving up everything to follow Jesus along the road. Bartimaeus goes from someone being quieted by the crowd to one who has voice in a place beside Jesus, a true disciple following the call of Jesus with a side note of having his sight restored. Bartimaeus was able to see more than any of the disciples. He understood the true nature of the son of David, the man who entered his life and heard the calls for mercy. And just like Bartimaeus, we have needs. We are wounded and blind Yet we have faith to know Jesus in our midst. We are called to be noisy, to be heard, 
and proclaim our knowledge of who Jesus is and all he has done for us. We act in concert with our families, congregations, and all of humanity to exhibit compassion and grace to those who are on the margins, those who are hurting or broken, especially those who may not be able to come forward on their own. But more importantly, we are able to point people in the direction of Jesus, knowing the path leads to the cross and our salvation. When Christ opens the eyes of our hearts to see him in all his glory, we are moved to serve him out of gratefulness for his salvation. And we know God will continue to show us the way and lead us in our call to serve Christ. Leap up from the side of whatever you are on. Give up your preconceived notions and throw off what is ever holding you back. Take courage. Get up. He's calling you. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. I, believe I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius, Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, died, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. dead. On, On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are thankful for your gifts and continue to ask you to prayerfully consider your church. Change my heart, oh God, make it
God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Risen One, we give you thanks for congregations and ministries throughout the world that serve as centers of prayer and action. Empower mis missionaries, teachers, healers, evangelists, the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team, Bishop Goal, Bishop Eaton, and all who are sent to share your song of joy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we give you thanks for a generous land that produces abundant harvests. Strengthen and protect all souls from rooftop gardens to prairie farmlands, to patio planters, to fertile valleys, and bless all who lovingly tend them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Ruling One, we give you thanks for leaders of nations who work to build up the common good. Strengthen efforts of reconciliation among all nations, that peace extends in every direction. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing One, we give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with chronic pain. Send healing and relief to all who are sick, especially Gail, Peggy, Cece, Jane, Bob, Barbara, Jim, Robert, Lynn, Susan, Brenda, Kim, Katrina, Milton, Dolores, Cheryl, Ronald, Libiana, Sharon, Thelma, Joe, Gary, those on our prayer list and those whom we name in our hearts or out loud. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Providing one, we give you thanks for all who provide for others. Inspire generosity in your people so that we carry out the work of making disciples of all nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Living One, we give you thanks for the saints who have increased our faith. Give us courage to follow in hope until you gather us all around your table of abundance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Amen. And gathered into one with the Holy Spirit, we now pray as Jesus taught. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Answer the call and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.